strong case can be made for Reginald Day's death being murder, however not at the hands of his girlfriend Crystal Mandon, the Duke Lacrosse victim accuser, welding a steak knife. Reginald Day was the victim of a homicide, but the murder weapon, instead of being a knife, was an endotracheal tube an endotracheal tube purposely placed in the esophagus to deprive Day's lungs of vital life-giving oxygen which led to his brain death and subsequent removal from life support. The removal from life support resulted in his actual death. Make no mistake about it, death stemmed from the purposefully, errantly placed endotracheal tube. The Deputy Chief Medical Examiner Clay Nichols, the Durham prosecutors, and the biased mainstream media had been willfully misleading the public into believing that the early morning April 3, 2011 stab wound to the chest Day sustained at the hands of his living girlfriend Mangum was the singular event responsible for his death. Nothing could be further from the truth as the wound was not considered life-threatening on his arrival at the Duke University Hospital emergency room trauma surgeons having the luxury of taking time to conduct diagnostic tests instead of rushing him directly into the operating room. An exploratory laparotomy later that Sunday morning revealed injuries only to the large intestine and a minor lesion to the spleen. Surgery was considered a success and he had a prognosis for a full recovery. According to the hospital records on the third post-operative day, Wednesday, April 6, 2011, Day, an alcoholic, started having severe symptoms consistent with impending delirium tremens. He was moved to the surgical intensive care unit. It was decided to conduct some diagnostic studies which required oral contrast, so a contrast agent was administered in a tube that extended from his nose to his stomach. The contrast, which has an emetic side effect, caused Day to vomit. Following the emetic event, it was decided to intubate him to prevent possible aspiration and allow the administration of concentrated oxygen. The endotracheal tube was placed into the esophagus instead of the airway. Misplacement of the tube is usually recognized immediately, removed and replaced. An esophageal intubation prevents oxygen from reaching the lungs and if left in place will result in death. An in-tidal CO2 monitor registered a negative reading, which indicated that the tube was not properly placed in the airway. Duke University medical staff then took a laryngoscope and visually looked to determine the tube's placement. Erroneously, the tube was assessed to be in the trachea, and it was left in place. Brain death ensued due to lack of oxygen getting to that organ. When lack of oxygen becomes critical for the heart muscles, they went into cardiac arrest. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, was immediately begun with chest compressions. The errantly placed endotracheal tube was removed and was replaced by another one, this time properly positioned in the trachea. With oxygen once again reaching the lungs, from there being transferred to the bloodstream and then circulated to all cells of the body, the heart muscles recovered with spontaneous heart contractions and restoration of circulation of the blood after 20 minutes of CPR. Unfortunately, the brain is an organ that is very sensitive to oxygen deprivation and its cells died, leaving brain in a comatose state. The unconscious day was immediately placed on life support. After a week of undergoing monitoring and observation, no improvement was noted, and on the 10th day of his hospitalization, Life support was electively withdrawn and shortly thereafter Reginald Day expired. According to Durham Prosecutor Discovery, which included medical records, that is how Reginald Day died. Consider the following five major facts which point to the death of Day as being a Duke University Hospital homicide. First, the person who intubated Day had experience with intubation. That is readily ascertained by the fact that he administered a paralytic agent to facilitate the procedure. It is extremely unlikely that he or she would intubate the esophagus instead of the trachea. Second, the entitled CO2 monitor's reading was indicative of an esophageal instead of tracheal placement. They was not reintubated. Third, 
the Duke University Hospital staff's visual assessment of the tube's placement with the use of a laryngoscope should have easily recognized that it was in the esophagus instead of the trachea. Fourth, the motive for Reginald Day's death would be to unleash a vendetta prosecution against Crystal Mangum for murder, which carries a life sentence instead of a much lesser sentence for a felony assault. And fifth, Reginald Day is an African American, a black male with a criminal record who is an alcoholic with a past drug history and without a college degree or professional occupation. In other words, he is expendable in North Carolina society. Outside of his immediate family, who cares if he dies? Certainly not the media, or the politicians who represent him, or the NAACP. Really, it's no big deal. Who cares?